Hi everyone, my name is Madeline Turner and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make two colors look like one going by Albers Interaction of Colors. Um, this is my second video out of three that I'll be doing. In my first one, we worked on color grids. So if you're interested, let's go ahead and learn how to do this project by Joseph Albers. Um, he started this study around 1960s and he primarily focused on how the colors interacted in the composition. Um, the two that he made the most famous were making two colors look like one and making one color look like two. And today I'll be showing you little tips and tricks on how to make two colors look like one. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, to get started, the supplies you are going to need will be a mixed media paper. This can be watercolor paper or just regular mixed media paper that will work. You're going to need a ruler and a pencil your palette to put your paints on. It can be whatever you would like. You can use wax paper, a regular flat wood palette, plastic palette, whatever you would like. And then you're going to want to use a wet media. And by wet media, what I mean is a acrylic or acrylic gouache or tempera. I would not suggest watercolor for this project just because watercolor would make it a lot more difficult for you to get the illusion that the two colors are one. So to get started, you can do any size that you would like, but I'm just going to do a five by five. Okay, for this one, I'm going to cut it diagonally. You can just go straight down or horizontally, whatever you would like. I'm just gonna go diagonally. All right, so those are two are two centers. So a trick that I learned in doing this to get this to work, um, I do a monochromatic, you can do different colors, but I think starting out doing a monochromatic will be much easier. I'm going to do a, a red, so. So I'm just using a cadmium red, a primary red, or whatever color you would like to use will work. So I'm going to get a color out. And for your paint brushes, you don't need anything fancy. You just need something to be able to fill that in and create a shape in the middle. Okay, so what I like to do first is I like to pick out the colors that are going to go in the middle of the spaces first. Um, since we are trying to make two colors look like one, um, it's very difficult to make two very contrasting colors look like one. So for you guys, I would just suggest doing um, a very close colored swatch. Um, so for mine, for example, I'm just going to use this primary red or cadmium red, whatever you have or whatever color you are using. Just whatever color you would like that comes to you, put that down first. And then what I would do is I would either go darker or lighter from that color a smidge enough to know that it's different but not wildly different so for example i am going to do a smidge lighter so a little white on your palette It's different enough that you can tell that it's a lighter shade. And what I like to do with those is I just like to pop them in the corner so whoever views it can see the two different colors. is because I'm going to be layering this color on top of it. You're, when you take your lighter color, you're going to, going to want to add that on top of a lighter one because doing that, if when you have a very stark, brighter shade or tone of that color, it's going to make this look darker than what it actually is. So let's go ahead and fill this in with the 
almost white pink. For this side, for me, I'm going to take the red, put it in there, and I'm going to add a little bit of its complement, which is green, to get a darker tone. You can also do blue and get a darker purple if you want, or whatever color, whatever color that you decide to do. Um, you're just going to want to make the color that you're putting in the middle of it darker, um, a lot darker. That's important. Um, same concept as this, just kind of flipped. When you make the background extremely dark, it's going to give the illusion that this color that you're putting in the middle is much brighter than what it actually is. So I'll put examples that I've done in the past um, that shows this. A lot of times the darker square is very dark. Um, they're not almost black, they're just a lot darker than you would expect. I will say um, for these experiments, they are trial and error. Is I find them kind of difficult to get correct on your first go. So if you get the colors down and your two colors look completely different, don't worry, that happens. You just need to play around with the tones. Maybe you need to make this a little darker. Maybe you need to make your background color lighter. Most of the time, it's the background color that messes it up. Um, just keep in mind that these swatches, they can't be drastically different. So you can't have, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do that, but typically in these, especially if you look up Albers examples, they're rather close in color. You can't have a primary red and a neon red. That's not going to work. Or a neon pink. That's almost, it's just very difficult to do. All right, I'm gonna start with this color and see how it goes. We might have to adjust it, we'll see. Okay, now that we have those, you'll want to just let them dry. And once those dry, you can do whatever shape in the middle. Um, you can do just a square, a circle, a heart, triangle, whatever you would like. I think I'm going to go for a triangle this time just to replicate the shape and I might try to connect them and I'll show you an example of when I connected these before. One thing that's important to remember would be try not to make the shape that you're putting in the center too big. Um, I think part of making the illusion that's important is keeping it minuscule. You can experiment with that of course. But for your first interaction, I would definitely try to keep them small just so the colors aren't too close to each other and you can start making the connection that they're two different colors. I think keeping space between them uh, helps further the illusion that they are the same color because they're not right next to each other like here for you to know that they are different colors. Also, I changed my mind on doing a triangle. Um, for some reason, I'm not liking how that looks, so I'm just going to make a rectangle. if for the glare if it's hard to see let me make sure to add the end product without glare here right now I'm just touching up the swatches to make sure that they are nice and pigmented and really showing the true color you can organize your swatches anyway I put my lighter color down here and the darker shade up here now I'm just going in and touching up and making sure everything looks perfect. I actually made a mistake there, I didn't let the paint dry, so just ignore that. Um, you can stop where you were, or if you want to take it a step further, I'm going to add lines going out. Adding these little lines can really challenge you on um, figuring out what you can do with the background color. 
in terms of making these colors look the same because usually when you leave them like this they look great they look super similar to each other but once you add those lines you can like you can really see the difference in them so i'm i really want to try that out and see how these work of course you don't have to do this or if you do you can do whatever you want i'm just going to bring mine i think i'm going to make a little hole in here too like that because i kind of like that and then make the lines come out like merge from inside of the square out so i'm going to go across and then once you get into the pink area area you'll switch back to this color and bring it in All right, and there you have it. I will attach the finished product here. You can see that the colors look very similar. What I like to do sometimes will be uh, to take a picture with the swatches included and then take one without them included. That just gives you a really good sense of the illusion without the swatches and then have the swatches there so people can see what the two different colors were supposed to be because it can be really shocking sometimes so you take that away and you look at this straight on um i know i personally would find it very hard to like move the colors next to each other and see that they are the same so yeah there you have it i hope you had fun um when you do these please do whatever color you want to do they're very fun you can also of course experiment with using um a different color scheme it doesn't have to be monochromatic but I do know monochromatic um, makes it a lot easier to get this effect when you're starting out so I hope you had fun